Hey everyone, I'm Rick Beato and today's Everything Music. It's What Makes This Song Great, episode 36. The band is Yes and the song is Roundabout. Coming up next. Roundabout was the second single off Yes's Fragile record, which came out on November 12, 1971. The song was written by singer John Anderson and guitarist Steve Howe, and the record was produced by Yes and Eddie Offord. Just for a point of reference, I decided to go back and look at what songs were on the charts or had been released in 1971, big rock songs, because I remember when Roundabout actually came out. So here are some of the songs, Stairway to Heaven, Imagine, What's Going On, Marvin Gaye, uh, Maggie May, Rod Stewart, American Pie, Don McLean, Won't Get Fooled Again, The Who, Brown Sugar, By the Stones, uh, Bob O'Reilly, Riders in the Storm, Ain't No Sunshine, Rock and Roll, Zeppelin, Changes, Bowie, Black Dog, Zeppelin, Aqualung. So Roundabout was in the midst of a lot of incredibly great songs. And... It was really unique at the time. This was on their fourth record. And I remember they had an edited radio version that was about, I'd say, three minutes and almost 50 seconds, probably 347, something like that. But then the full-length version is about eight minutes long. We're going to talk about the full-length version today. Because when I got the record after hearing the single, I put on the record with the full-length version, there's all these solos and things in it, and it was really fascinating. Um, let's talk about the intro of the song because it has a very iconic introduction. It actually starts with a very cool sound effect that leads into the harmonics on the guitar. Let's check it out. Now, I always wondered what that was. It sounds kind of like a piano, but I'd never heard that sound before I heard that. And it's something that producers use all the time nowadays. That is a backwards piano that leads right into this harmonic. It's actually two E minor chords, both hard panned, one on each side, and they're both reversed. Here's what it sounds like in forward motion. So these two E minor chords lead into the opening harmonic sequence, which is this part. So, and then back. Then he goes to that C there, which is really C major. And then the reversed C major chord happens. Back into the harmonic. Here's what the C major chord sounds like in forward motion. This technique of using a reverse chord is used all the time in music. You'll hear this a lot of times to give you a sudden jolt into a section. You take something with a sharp transient like a piano or a guitar that has an initial sharp attack and a long sustain, and then if you reverse it, it ramps up and just sucks into a hard stop. And then you put something after it. These, it's very common to use these kind of things going into a chorus or anything where you want to make a really dramatic impact. It's no different than a crescendo in, you know, with any brass instrument or string instrument or anything like that. Used as, in this exact same way. And the third time. And then we're in to the... Anyone that was in the Yes in the 70s knows the lick. It starts on D major and then walks down on C major and then and then into the harmonic part. That's the part that most people don't know. I'm going to solo the guitars here. Check them out. Along with the harmonics and the guitars, the bass and drums enter with this part. This is one of the coolest bass parts in any Yes tune. Chris Squire was an amazing bass player. Here it is solo. Check it out. And here's 
the drum solo. This is Bill Bruford, who's one of the greatest fusion drummers ever. That drum fill that Bill just played leads you into the verse and goes along with this guitar and drum part. And then we're in with the vocals. Here's the verse. I'll be the roundabout. The words will make you out and out and spend the day your way. Call it morning, driving through the sun and in and out the valley. Incredibly great singing by John Anderson. Everybody that knows Yes knows that John was an incredible singer and still is. All of the vocals here are double tracked, meaning he sang it once and sang it again. It thickens it up. When you have a really busy track or really dense track, the double tracking is not only a stylistic feature, it also helps the vocal cut through a dense mix. The vocal melody is simply over an E minor vamp. That's what I would call this whole section, this part of the verse. And then you have that climbing line. Here's what the guitar and bass do during it. The descending progression that just went by is B minor, B minor over A, G major 7 to G11. In the same section, the organ enters with an arpeggio figure. Check it out. It starts on a B minor triad over the B minor chord, right? Does it two times. And then it ends on a uh, AC, it sounds like ACG he's playing over the G sus. And he does a descending glissando. When the chorus enters, there's a really great guitar part that's, that, that is one of the hookiest parts in the song. Check it out. It's made up of a left and a right part. Here's the left part. Kind of like an amp. This sounds like a DI part. Let's check out the vocals in the beginning of the chorus. Also during the course, we have the organ line. So this whole section is just based on triads. He starts G major and then C, F, C, F, C, G, and then G, C, F, G, B flat. So he starts out arpeggiating. That's G major then. That's C to F, C to F, and then back to G major. And the second time through, he goes, and then, then to B flat major. Root position, second inversion, first inversion, second inversion, first inversion, back to root position. Then when it goes to B flat, he's in a second inversion B flat major chord. We next head into the interlude before the second verse. Same thing, but there's a cool mini mode part. This is a double track Mini Moog that had, uh, Mini Moog had just actually come out in 1970, I believe. I'll split the tracks. And then, played in thirds. There's a really cool drum fill that goes along with this Moog riff. Check it out. The second verse is almost an exact repeat of the first. The music 
Great I harmonies. I love the slight retard. There's a slight retard here, and this is what happens when you don't play to a click and you play live back in the old old days. Okay, so you'll hear that they slightly delay these hits. It's great. Right here. Here. This is what's great about old school bands, all the classic bands. When they weren't playing to a click and they were playing on tape and they had played the stuff live, you have this tempo that that can breathe. And when they slow down here, it makes it really powerful. Check it out. Then back into it. That's, I can't stress that enough. This is one of the great things about not playing to a click and playing live that you can never recreate. Those, th that delayed feel there, it just makes the chorus, when it comes back into tempo, sound even that much more powerful. Listen again. Right here. And then. Boom, back in. And then back into the riff. What, do you, what can you say? I love once again that aggressive bass of Chris Squire. That Rickenbacker, it's got so much grit to it, you know? Listen to this when he comes in with the drums. Here's the. That is some real rock and roll playing right there. The second chorus starts out the same as the first. Virtually identical. Riff comes in. Now the vocals are never the same because this isn't Pro Tools where they're flying everything around. Listen. 24 before my love you see I'll be there with you. There's no way that anybody's going to track vocals like that on Pro Tools. They're going to be flying stuff around. Oh, I just sing it one time. This is all sung. They probably didn't remember what they sang on the first chorus, and these parts are a little bit different, which really makes it cool. Check out the bass, though, here at the end of this chorus, because it's really... Listen, this reminds me, and this is really where Getty Lee gets his sound from, I think. He's a huge Chris Squire fan. So well, then we go into this transition section here, where we have the backwards piano again, and then we go into this. So there's a there's a percussion jam that comes in right here. Check this out. You've everybody's heard this, but timbales. It's got this clave part there. It's almost like a like a samba. And then you have this riff. So that's the main guitar part that happens there after that descending riff. The organ plays in unison. Listen. Oh, 
over this riff, we have this really great vocal bridge part. Listen. Along the drifting cloud, the eagle searching down on the land. Catching the swirling wind, the sailor sees the rim of the land. The eagle's dancing wings create as weather spins out of hand. What I really like about this is that there's a great stereo spread to the vocals. It sounds really wide. All the layering is, is incredibly cool. Then we go to this really cool guitar organ part. Check it out. When I used to listen to it, I always wondered what the two parts were doing. It's a, When I solo them, it's easy to hear, but the way that they harmonize with each other. <laughs> Check out, so here's the organ. And here's the guitars. And here's what they sound like together, just soloed. So that repeats again. To hold the land free, partly no more than grains of sand. We stand to lose all time, but all the land is fine. Check out the drumming over this here, the drumming and the percussion. end of the bridge. Timbali roll. And then we're back to the intro harmonic part. But the keyboard, organ's playing B minor triad here. Then it goes to C major triad. And then Then it goes to that E minor triad. It's an inversion, but. Then back to C major. And then we go into the beautiful part with the Mellotron and vocals here. It sounds like Strawberry Fields sound. Then the keyboard swell into the solo. Let's listen to the vocals along with this. Beautiful. Here's that harmony part there on the last line. Twenty-four before my love and I'll be there. It's awesome. Along with the Mellotron part, there's the arpeggio in the organ still. And next we move into the organ solo. Let me solo it for you. It's unbelievable. Check it out. Starts with the swell. Then we're on to the guitar riff, into the guitar solo.
Let me solo the guitar there. Actives. to the backwards guitar solo. Check it out. Right here. Then you hear the guitar doubling the bass line, and I think that's Chris Squire actually doing that. The end of the song has one more really important hook that everybody knows, this part. Really drenched in reverb. Does eight times, keeps adding a vocal. And then... And it does the Picardy third, the E major chord at the end instead of E minor. That's all for now. Please subscribe here to my Everything Music YouTube channel. If you're interested in the Beato book, go to my website at www.rickbeato.com and follow me on Instagram at rickbeato1. Thanks for watching.